Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah. So for today's video, I'm going to show you my daughter's DIY dinosaur cake for her sixth birthday and I'm making it with my easy chocolate cake recipe. So if you do enjoy today's video, please give it a thumbs up as it does help my channel a lot. And if you do enjoy today's video or the content you see here on my channel, I would love if you consider subscribing and join my YouTube family. So don't forget that red subscribe button and the notification bell to miss any future videos for me. Here's the ingredients you'll need for the easy chocolate cake recipe. You'll need some vegetable oil or canola oil, some apple cider vinegar, some cocoa powder, some white sugar, some flour, some baking soda, some vanilla, and some salt. You're first going to grab a large bowl and a whisk and start measuring out the dry ingredients. So you're going to put in three cups of flour. two cups of sugar, two-thirds of a cup of cocoa powder, two teaspoons of baking soda, and half a teaspoon of salt, and they're gonna whisk the dry ingredients all together. Once you've mixed that all together, you're gonna to then add two cups of cold water, and one cup of vegetable oil, and two teaspoons of vanilla. Once you've gone ahead and added the liquid ingredients to the dry ingredients, you'll take your whisk and mix it all together until it's well blended. And then once you're done doing that, you will add three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And then I take a spatula and mix it all together after that. Once the ingredients is all well blended together, I'm going to take my pans and I'm going to line them with parchment paper and then spray them with cooking oil. Once I add all the cake mixture in, I'll then bang it on the counter just to get as many of the air bubbles out as I can. And then I'll put this in the oven uh, at 350 for 30 to 35 minutes because I'm using a 13 by 9 inch pan. Now that that's in the oven, I'm making the cake all over again because I want to do two 9 by 9 pans of the cake so I can do run pass one recipe for both of the pans so once again I'm going to line them with parchment paper spray them with oil and then once I pour the mixture in I'm going to bang them on the counter to get any air bubbles out and the this size will cook for 20 to 25 minutes still at 350 as well
cakes out of the oven I'll just and been out for about 10 minutes, I will take a knife and go around the edge of the pan and then I'll put it onto a cooling rack and let it cool for a while. And then once that's all cooled off, I will wrap all the cake up in with saran wrap and stick in the freezer for about an hour because once you, I freeze it a little bit, it makes it much easier to ice. So that's kind of something that I've been doing with all my cakes and it's made everything much easier, especially if I'm spreading icing and not just piping. It just makes my life so much easier. Next I had to figure out how I was going to place all the pieces and then what size I was going to cut some of them to get the layout of the cake. I did go on to Pinterest to get a few inspirational ideas and my daughter also requested to have some dinosaurs on the cake as well, some specific ones. So once I figured out this layout, I wanted to place the dinosaurs on the cake to make sure they would all fit based on the size that I had picked. Next, I'm gonna make the classic butter icing. It's really easy. All you need is half a cup of soft butter, so I actually use margarine blocks. Then you'll add two cups of icing sugar, you'll cream it all together, and then you'll add one teaspoon of vanilla, two tablespoons of milk, and another cup of icing sugar, and mix it together. And then as you're creaming it and mixing it all together, you'll gradually add another two tablespoons of milk to make it smooth and get your desired consistency. Now, depending on what I'm doing, if I'm piping, I don't necessarily always add the extra milk because I like to have stiff icing for piping. Whereas if I'm spreading the icing, I like to add the milk because I want to have it smoother and easier to spread out. So it's kind of a gauge. I kind of just take a look at it, see how the texture is and kind of play around with it. So you may find you may end up adding the extra milk. You may add, add more milk than what's asked or you may keep the extra milk out altogether. It kind of depends what you're going for and how you're icing the cake. I did make a double batch of the icing because it was going to cover most of the cake because green is the biggest color that I'm using on the cake. And to color the icing, I am using food gel. I don't like using food coloring. I find it too liquidy. Uh, if I use paste, it's actually much better and gets more true color. Um, but the gels give a pretty good true color as well. Whereas the food coloring just doesn't give that true of a color. So I prefer not to use them. So I'm going to go ahead, add this here to the icing. I just kind of guess I add a couple drops to it at, and then see how I like the color. And then I can always add more, but you never want to add too many because you can't obviously take away from the color, but at least you can add to it if you don't like what the color is turning out to be. Now that my icing is made, the first thing I'm going to do is attach all these pieces together using the green icing and then go all around the cake along the edges before I start piping. When I'm piping, I like to put my disposable icing bag into this cup and then fill it using some spoons with the icing. Now I highly recommend the disposable ones versus the reusable ones because the reusable ones are very difficult to clean. So I always do a little bit of a test on the plate first before I go ahead and do it on the cake. Now this is a grass icing uh, piping tip that I have. I have three different sizes. I got them off Amazon and honestly, they're probably the coolest icing tip I've ever gotten because it truly does look like grass. It takes a little practice on the technique you're gonna do but it's honestly pretty easy to use and it does create some pretty cool grass scenes. So I made a single batch of the icing to make it some more green. Now, as you'll see, when you look at me pipe the rest of the cake, I didn't make the exact same shades. There's one patch of grass on my cake that is a bit different shade, but you know what? Not all grass is always the exact same color, right? And it's for a cake. So it's still green, just looks a little different. And honestly, I actually prefer the color that I did the, with that little patch versus the rest of the cake. But you know what? It's all trial and error and it is what it is. 
but my cakes not, never look perfect, but my kids enjoy them and they like them and to me that's all that matters. I made some more icing and took a little bit of it out and put it into a small bowl and made it into blue because I only have a very small blue patch that's like the pond. So here I'm just going to spread it with the icing, uh, icing spreader and do a little bit of patch of blue. Lastly, I added the brown food coloring to the rest of the icing that was left. I'm not sure why, but I actually struggled with this brown section. So I did spread the icing out, put the layer of cake on, spread it out again, put the other layer of cake on so it's like an adhesive. But then when it came to the edges of it, I first thought, okay, I'll pipe it. But then it was a little runnier than I had hoped for. So I wasn't working out when I was piping it. So I decided to smooth it out with my icing spreader. But then it still wasn't looking that great to me. I thought it was looking a bit sloppy, a bit messy. But the end of the day, it was supposed to represent a cliff and cliffs are made of rocks and rocks are full of imperfections. So I guess it works. Then right here, my daughter's actually beside me helping me with the placement of the dinosaurs because for her sixth birthday cake, so I want her to have the dinosaurs where she wanted them and where she envisioned them. So that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed going along with me as I made the cake from start to finish and kind of designed the cake as I went. Um, my daughter absolutely loved the cake and my two boys who enjoy dinosaurs as well thought the cake was really, really cool as well. So I make these cakes for my kids at their request. Now they're nowhere near perfect by any means, but my kids love them and I'm always pretty proud of them. So to me, that's all that matters because I do this for my kids. And so if you did enjoy today's video, please give it a thumbs up as it does help my channel a lot. If you do enjoy today's video or the content you see here on my channel, I would love if you consider subscribing and join my YouTube family. So forget that red subscribe button and the notification bell to so miss any future videos for me. If you're looking for other ideas for cakes, I've done Minecraft, I've done a car cake, I've also done a bunch of different cupcakes and stuff. I'll have a playlist in my description box below for baking to give you any of my cake and cupcakes and baking inspiration videos. So thanks again so much for clicking on my video today and watching it. I appreciate all the support so much. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.